massive manhunt in the area. Um, that expanded, obviously, to areas outside of our city. And as you heard, uh, later on in the evening, at about 2.33 a.m., 2.28 a.m., I should say, um, our officers arrived in Forest Hill, but they arrived in the Forest Hill because of Jay and Jay because Jay and Jay relentlessly went out and sought that uh, silver-colored Ford 500 that matched the suspect vehicle description. On a whim, they pull into a parking lot of a hotel, and they said, they're going to they're gonna keep looking. It didn't matter whether it was 2 in the morning or not. They kept looking, and they were able to locate that vehicle, notice, notify a Forest Hill police officer, and they looked inside the vehicle. They came out armed with flashlights. They came armed with just a dogged stick to that helped us bring this criminal and to justice and bring our, our loving Salem back to us. Uh, they found forensic evidence inside the car. And when our officers pulled up, it allowed them to quickly locate the person lo that was inside of the hotel, find what room number that person was in. And they breached the door of that hotel room and found that mail located inside. Again, I have to thank Jay and Jay, but I have to tell you that our police officers never stopped. They kept in the forefront of their minds throughout this community and throughout communities around here that Salem Sabatka was going to come home last night. So once they recovered her and made the arrest inside the property, they transported her to the hospital and they transported Webb to jail. He was arraigned on charges for aggravated kidnapping and subsequent charges that have yet to be leveled, but we know there will be additional charges. Um, that's a summary of just the events that happened yesterday. But what I'd also like to share is that as a police chief and as the leader of this organization, it's, uh, it's very special to know that our officers uh, did everything that they could do to bring her home and the units that, that worked together to get this done, working together with citizens in this area is a very, very special and important thing. So I'd like to give you all a hand as the citizens in this community for pulling together the way you did. That doesn't happen everywhere in the United States. People don't get out and just become more than just the eyes and ears. They become the search party. They become the rescuers. They become the heroes here in the city of Fort Worth. And we're damn proud of it. We want to play for you the time when we actually breached the door and what the officers heard. And we want you to hear what the officers across the city heard that were tuned in, listening to what went on last night. I'm not sure how uh, loud this will play, just because the amplification's a little low, but I'm gonna read it to you and then we'll play it, okay? At 2.22 in the morning, we heard a broadcast, and it was the best broadcast you could hear. It was, we got her, we got her, we got her, he's in custody. Those, those are the times that you appreciate what the men and women of the police department do and the people in this community do to keep our community, Ryan Place, safe. So let's play it for you. I'm hoping that you can all hear it. <laughs> Buddy. Good to see you guys again. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we don't have the uh, amplification like Chief said. So we're going to play it here. The media will be able to hear it here. If we're quiet enough, we'll be able to hear it. And what we're going to do is put it on social media. Uh, so everybody can hear it, and we'll do that here in just a little bit. Uh, it's going to actually play it twice in a row. What we'll do is now play it on the, one of our amplifiers in the car, and maybe that'll give people in the back an opportunity to hear it. It's harrowing. 
and it's, it's just something that we need to share with you. Police officers that worked out here last night, the detectives, all the special units, and all of the agencies that helped us, every last one of them that had kids that went home last night just like you all did, slept a little more sound and hugged their kids a little more tightly because they knew that they had a department that cared enough to get to, to work dog tired into the evening to make sure that they got our home. Again, thank you, Ryan Place. Thank you to J&J. And uh, remember this, guys and gals in our city. You're more than our eyes and ears. Everybody's famous for saying citizens are our eyes and ears, but you're more than that. You are our partners, and let's keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, if any immediate members have questions, we will take some questions. Remember this, this, this case involves a juvenile, so we won't get into uh, particulars of certain things that involve this incident, as you know. Chief or Mayor, have y'all been able to speak with uh, Salem? Have y'all seen her? No, I have not, and I'm quite sure her parents want privacy at this point. Yes, her parents are spending time with her now, and uh, we, we have reached out. How's so she doing? We have, we have not heard anything but stable condition. Yes. Do you know what time 2.22 a.m. Are you, are you saying what time the actual, we, we don't have that information right now. Uh, we would recover, that information would be part of the evidence that's covered into this, so we would get the books from the hotel and obviously log that information. That'll be provided later on. Is there, uh, a lot of people have questions about the alert. Well, I can tell you that when an Amber Alert is activated, Amber Alerts work and the system works because we're able to give a tag number. In this instance, we had a vehicle description, a, a semi-vague vehicle description, but not a plate. So we were able to leverage what we could out of the Amber Alert system and our social media, and that's what really helped us there. Social media saved the day for us. Oh, no, but like I think what we're, what we're wondering is a lot of people say that they never got an Amber that's Alert. That's correct. Yes. What happened? The early on description didn't fit the criteria for Amber Alert because there was no license plate. Now, we plan to visit Chief Will 2, all of us, yeah. with the Amber Alert team that issues that to see if they're guidelines need to be revisited. Just to be clear, though, was an Amber Alert ever issued, though? Uh, there apparently was an alert that was issued and received by media members, but it was not received by the citizens general public. in the general public, which concerns us as well as okay. everyone else. Uh, as the mayor stated, we will work, you know, endlessly to find out why that criteria is set the way it is, but we weren't able to give a tag. And normally when you see an AMBER alert, there is tag information provided. The AMBER, the AMBER program developed years ago when there were not so many cell phones, nor door cameras, nor video surveillance. And I don't know that they've updated their guidelines now that we have much better video and social media. They probably need to visit that again. But this wasn't like a glitch, sorry. This wasn't a glitch in the system, correct? Not as far as I know. Oh, okay. I thought that How many steps did go through when it gets, like, from when, it, from when you say there's AMBER alert? Uh, we, we couldn't really get into it's that. Very prompt, I yes. know that, but I can't. But but again, the criteria is very is very special, and one of the main issues is that you need a tag number to enter into that system for it to be broadcast the way a normal ambulance is broadcast. Well. Uh, 
you know, who, who, who can get into the minds of some people that would conduct a horrific crime like this. Um, I can't get into to put myself into a kidnapper's mind. All I can say is I'm very happy we have him in custody, and I'm very happy that we returned her to her parents, because that, overall, that's the most important thing that came up about this entire incident. What do you think about the... Some, go ahead. What do you think about the victim? Uh, again, we can, we cannot we cannot say that to be sure, but we know that uh, the mother, Miss Sweet, you know, was the person to fight this this male off. We know that we've got the person inside the hotel room, and we have the child recovered, and we believe we have the right person that did the entirety of this incident. Details will continue to come out. Today is the day to celebrate the fact that the neighbors came together, that social media worked, that prayers were answered. That's really what and this really, is about. And congratulations, Chief, to that. Um, do you have anything to say about the, the case out of Tyler, where last year, you know, this case was dismissed because of the situation happened there with the alleged victim in that case, and then he comes over here to Fort Worth. What do you think about that, Chief? Well, it's really not my place to, to comment on what happened in Tyler besides you know I, all I know is that a witness was not cooperative and they didn't pursue the case there's no opinion that I can give you on it other than the factual information that I had we don't we don't have all of those details right now. I don't know whether any of our police officers had any contact in the traffic stop or on foot, but as we develop more details on whether we've had more contacts with them, we'll, we'll gladly put that out. Yes. Pardon? I, I won't speculate on that. Yeah, was he living there? I, I can't, again, we, we can't speculate. It's, uh, you know, as, as far as we know right now, it's a transient. I can tell you this, in my time here, we've had uh, a few come to a conclusion and it was like this, uh, one of which a uh, child was found out in the woods and we were able to recover that child within a few hours. We've been very fortunate. This is a community that pulls together. When things like this happen, albeit rare as you put it, our communities like here in Moran Place pull together, put search parties together, and work hand-in-hand -hand with our police officers that work until we can exhaust our all means to find the child. So you're right, these instances are rare, but we have had an instance like this that has resulted in the same type of conclusion. Is he facing any additional charges tonight? Uh, at this at this time, no, but I would suspect there will be additional charges. We'll take one, we'll take one more question. I wouldn't share any any portion of that at this time. That would be you know, something that we would document and put in court. Can we speak to Justine? I don't think he'll speak to you. He, he said he didn't want to be on camera except to say prayer. Right. Listen, thank you all again. It's so important that you come out here and that you show the unity in this neighborhood and the unity in the city of Fort Worth to, to really get things done. Nobody, nobody takes crime as seriously as the citizens here do in Fort Worth. Congratulations. And thank our police department. Anytime you see any of them, they do incredible work. Incredible work from the newest officers on the beat who happened, one of our new officers, officers happened to be the one who said, let's get the doorbell cameras immediately. He probably would have come anyway, but he and a partner said, let's do that. And it takes every age and every degree of professional and experience to do this. Thank you, Thank you all again.